So if you're new to the Microsoft Access program, then there's usually one word that strikes terror into the hearts of almost every first time database designer. And that word is relationships. And that's not just because relationships are terrifying, but it's also because the relationship when it's well thought out is the difference between a well-functioning database and one that has problems. You know, lots of manual work, missing data, angry people. In this video, I'm going to cover the indeterminate relationship. And with a word that long, it's actually one of the simplest relationships that you can create in the Access Program, and one that you'll use very often. Now, in the next couple of videos, I'll come back and talk about the one-to-one -one relationship, as well as the one-to-many relationship. And in each of the videos, I'm going to show not just what they are, but how they're created and how you can use them. So stick around while I show you how to use the indeterminate relationship in Microsoft Access Databases. The indeterminate relationship in Microsoft Access is the simplest and most flexible of the different access relationship types. And it really just means that fields from two different tables match. Now, to create the relationship, you really just have to have two tables with a similar field. And while there are very few rules associated with the indeterminate relationship, one helpful rule is that the fields that you are matching from the two tables should be of the same data type. Otherwise, you're going to get error messages later down the line when you're trying to query the, the information. To create the relationship, I would just move to the database tools ribbon and then over to relationships. When the relationships window opens, I can either use the show table button to add the two tables to the relationships window, or I can just drag them in manually by grabbing the table from the navigation pane and dragging it in. So I'll add the second table. You can see that the two fields are similar and to create the indeterminate relationship, I'll just grab the part number from my first table and then drag it over to the part number in the second table. And when I let go, I'm then able to see the edit relationships dialog box. Now, because the indeterminate relationship is simple and flexible, it really does not allow for any rules. For example, you cannot enforce referential integrity in this relationship because neither table has a keyed field. You can also not cascade update any related fields or cascade delete any related records. So in this case, I'll just click the create button and now the indeterminate relationship is created between the two tables. One place where the indeterminate relationship can be helpful is in the creation of lookup fields or combo boxes. In this table, you'll notice that the part numbers and part descriptions are assigned to specific warehouse names. So the people doing the data entry actually refer to the warehouse by name, but other areas in the company might refer to the warehouse by their warehouse number. So in order to add the information in, they're having to manually type this in. So at least the warehouse name and the region. If you look a little more closely at this table, you'll notice that there are some errors that are going to cause problems when the data is queried later on. First, some of the warehouse names are different. For example, Tom's River is referred to as Tom River further down because of a data entry error. In addition, the Malibu warehouse name in some cases is applied to the Western region, but also the Malibu warehouse is located in the East. Once again, a data entry error. And you can eliminate these kinds of errors by using a indeterminate relationship and a lookup field or combo field. In this example, you'll notice that I now have two tables, a product table 
that shows all the part numbers and the part descriptions as well as a type in field for the warehouse name. But I also have a second table called one warehouse table and when I open that table you'll see that it contains only information about the warehouse. The warehouse name that we're using in the product table as well as the warehouse number, the warehouse region as and even a warehouse manager in case we'd like to see that information later on. To use the indeterminate relationship to resolve this problem, I'll close the two tables, once again move to the database tools ribbon, and then open the relationships window. I'll now add the two tables, so the product table and the warehouse table, and then join these two tables by using the warehouse name field. Once again, the edit relationships dialog box presents itself and I'm shown that the type of relationship that I'm creating is indeterminate. I'll click the create button. The line joins between the two tables and I've now created that indeterminate relationship. To use this relationship in the creation of the lookup field, I'll move to the product table and then open it in design view. When the table opens in design view, I can then go to the warehouse name field and then at the bottom of the screen move to the field properties for the warehouse name. I'll choose the lookup tab and then change text box to combo box. So instead of having the employees type in the name of the warehouse, I'll have them choose it from a drop down or combo box field. When I choose combo box, I'm then given a series of other options. And the one that I'll, I'll point your uh, attention to first is the table or query. I could either have them type in the names which I'm trying to avoid, or they can pull this information from a table or a query. And in our case, we'll be using the one warehouse table. Instead of just using the one warehouse table, which has several fields, we'll only use one field and we'll get that one field by moving to the row source option just below row source type. Instead of choosing the drop down or combo box here, I'll just move to the right and choose the three dot builder button and build a query. So I'll add the warehouse table close the show table box, and then add the warehouse name to the query grid. This allows me to sort the information so that the warehouse names are not just in a random order, so I can move to the sort field and then choose either ascending or descending and create some order when the combo box drops down and presents options. That's it. I'll just close the window, either using the close button or the larger close button here on the design tab and save the change. The field is now represented as SQL code in the row source field. And then I can just add one other rule to this uh, property list and choose the limit to list so that my users can only choose from items on the list. They can type in, and it does include type ahead, but they cannot choose any locations that are not on my combo box list. So I can change that just by moving to the field and double clicking, and it toggles to yes. Now I'll close the table and save the change. Now if I move to the products table, I can now go to each one of those parts and part descriptions and then assign a warehouse name simply by clicking into the field and then choosing from a pre-existing list of warehouse names. For example, Bismarck or Tom's River. This makes sure that the entries are the same entry in every field and if I make a mistake in my typing and tab out of it, I'll then receive a error message that lets me know that the thing I typed is not on my list of warehouses. 
Now that we've assigned warehouse names to all of the part numbers, it's time to create a query and see how our indeterminate relationship can help us to cut down on the uh, data entry errors by cutting down on the data entry. So I'll close the table and then move to the Create tab and create a new query in Query Design. When the Query Design box opens, I can then choose the two tables from the Show Table box and then close the uh, Show Table box. So in this case, I'll add the part number and part description and then from the Warehouse table, I'll choose the Warehouse name. Now I mentioned that other parts of the company take a look at this, these warehouses not by name but by number. If I wanted to create those numbers using my previous method, I would have to go to the uh, expression builder and create quite a long if statement in order to look at all of the locations and then assign a number. Because I use the indeterminate relationship, the two tables come in joined by warehouse name and all I have to do now is to add the warehouse number from the table. I can also add the warehouse region, which will always be accurate, at least as accurate as it is in the warehouse table. And if there's a question about the manager of that warehouse, I also have that information. And now when I run the query, I now get back all of the part numbers, all of the part descriptions and warehouse names and all the associated information about that warehouse, which is accurate every time. See, that wasn't too bad. So I hope you found that helpful and that you'll find a good use for the indeterminate relationship. And as I mentioned, I'll be back soon with a couple of more videos and talk about the one-to-one -one and one-to-many relationship in Microsoft Access. Until our next video, thanks for joining me, and I'm Wayne.